Hi everybody, this is Johnny. Let's make a game together. For this game you will need some paper, something to write with, some coins for playing pieces, some dice, and uh, oh, maybe a bear. So this game is called The Alien Factor. The Alien Factor. Let's draw a square over here. I'm going to draw one line down here, about that long. An equal length line over here. You can see it makes a nice triangle. I'm going to put another line over here and a base over here. In the middle, I'm going to write the number 2 and then put in 3 and 4 and then 5 and 6 and 7, 8, 9 and across the top 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And moving over here, let's go backwards. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, start again, 9, 8, 7, and 6. It's a nice grid, 5 by 5. Now over here, let's put a couple dots. We'll put a dot here and a dot here, and we'll put a dot like a kite on either side as well. On the top of this, let's put a 36 here. We like that number. A good number here would be 20, and over here, let's put 54, and down here, we should just put a mouth. And this mouth should have sharp teeth. Don't you think? You can make sharper teeth if you want to. This is pretty bad. So a mouth with some sharp, sharp teeth. Okay. Oh, we still need some more numbers. Let's put an 18. Um, make it a 12 instead. And an 18 here. And after 20, let's put a 24 here. A 30 here. And after 36, let's go ahead and put a 42. 48 and down here 56 and 64 and I'm gonna put a dot next to each of them this will help us with the game later on looking pretty good now let's finish drawing our alien aliens have to have eyeballs right let's go ahead and draw a circle here and draw a circle here and maybe a line coming across like that and darken in most of it down at the bottom here and over here too two good eyes maybe you want to have some eyelashes and of course some eyebrows and of course some hair and maybe a nice round body looking good so far maybe need some hands how many fingers does an alien have another hand down here and of course some legs Maybe with some boots on. Maybe knobby knees too. Okay. Oh, let's give it a nose. We'll give it a little nose right here. Alright, so there's our alien. And we have our alien factor game board ready to play. So. Let's put it like this so we can see it. We'll need a couple players. So the two players we have for today's game are Charles and Sarah. These are our players for today. And let's see, we're going to need dice. I'm going to take a dice a die out of here. And we'll need these coins in a minute. 
It will all make good sense in a moment. Now let me explain the rules to you. The first thing we do is we put a marker, a token, on the mouth right now. Nothing bad yet. I'll explain the mouth in a little bit. We're going to be moving around in clockwise fashion to these different numbers based on the dice roll. If I roll a 1, we'll go to 12. If I roll a 2, we go to 18. And we'll roll something in a moment. What we want to do is look at what that number might be. So if it's 18, we can think of 18 in terms of what factors it has. What numbers do we multiply to make 18? 18 could be 3 and 6. 18 could be 2 and 9. Now if it's Charles's turn, Charles will put a coin on those two numbers in the grid. The player who gets four in a row, either vertically, horizontally, or diagonally first, will be the winner. So let's try this out. Charles is going first, and Charles rolls a four. One, two, three, four. Twenty-four. Now Charles has some choices. Charles is going to be using pennies, and Charles has to decide where to put these pennies to get four in a row. Now, you think about it for a moment. What are the factors of 24? Maybe it's 3 and 8. Maybe it's 4 and 6. So if we think about those, Charles could go 3 and 8. And for the rest of the game, those two spaces will be Charles. Or Charles could go 4 and 6. Charles should be smart about where to put those coins because 4 and 6 on this row make for two in a row and all Charles needs now is two more spaces to win the game. Now Charles may choose to do that and that's a good thing. But there's something more special about this game. The basic game gives you a choice. Basic game could be three times eight and Charles could put coins at three and eight or Charles could say 4 times 6 and choose 4 and 6. Right now he has 4 and 6. But like I said, Charles could choose 3 and 8. But the more advanced game does something different. The more advanced game allows you more choices. This is a good way to play if you want to have lots and lots of choices about where to put your coins. So the challenge level, you could choose, Charles could choose 3 and 8. Charles could choose 4 and 6, but Charles could factorize 24 down to all the factors. The prime factors of 24 are 2 times 2, makes 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. So Charles could choose to put coins on 2, another 2, another 2, and a 3. Look what that looks like. 2, another 2, another 2, and a 3. That might be Charles's move. Or Charles could instead move from the prime factorization to go down to 2 times 2 times 6. So Charles could choose instead to choose 1, 2, another 2, and a 6. And that could be Charles's turn. Charles could instead choose 4 times 2 times 3. 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24. All of these make 24. 4 times 2 is 8 times 3 is 24, so Charles could choose 4 and 2 and 3. And Charles could look at the board and look, 4 and 2 and 3, and maybe that's Charles's move. All right? So Charles is going to choose that move in the challenge level. You can decide to play the more basic game. That is up to you. So Charles has made his play. It is now Sarah's turn. And Sarah is going to move the piece from this position from 24 now. So Sarah rolls a 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now 56, 56 can be thought of as 7 times 8, or 7 times 2 times 2 times 2, or 7 times 2 times 4. Any one of those. So Sarah can choose from those and say, well, look, I'm thinking about the most I can get out of this is I'd like to have a 7, 
and Sarah is going to be using the shiny coins, the dimes. And Sarah says, I like seven and two and four. And so I'm going to use two times four is eight. And eight times seven gives me gives her 56. All right. So now it is Charles's turn. And Charles rolls a four. One, two, three, four, 18. Now, 18 can be made by 2 times 9. So 2 and 9 could be the choice for Charles. 3 and 6 could be the cho choice for Charles. But also, 2 and 3 and 3 again, because 2 times 3 times 3 is also 18. So what choice should Charles make? Charles is looking here. Charles likes this 9 and this 2. And Sarah's going to take one more turn. I think you're getting the idea of the game now. Remember, four in a row is what you're trying for. This is Sarah's turn. Sarah rolls a five. One, two, three, four, five. Forty-two. And remember, forty-two is the same as six times seven. So Sarah could choose six and seven. And there's a nice six right here. But Sarah could also choose two times three times seven. Those are the prime factors. So Sarah's looking at 2 and 3 and 7. And remember, Sarah might want to block what's happening for Charles. So she's going to go ahead. And remember, she has to use all of the factors. If she chooses 2 and 3 and 7, she has to use all of them for the turn. She can't just choose some of them. There is no 2 left over. So she's going to have to use a 6 and a 7 instead. So she might choose the 6 here and the seven here, maybe blocking Charles from going down here. So there's one more piece to this game. If we're moving around, say the next roll is one, two, three, four, five. If I roll a five the next time, and this would be Charles's turn, Charles rolls a five, one, two, three, four, five. Charles has landed in the alien's mouth. What that means is Charles has to take away one coin off the board somewhere and doesn't get to place any other markers on the grid. So Charles is looking and Charles says this one's probably not the most worthwhile one and takes that one away. Charles is still trying to get four in a row up here and maybe down here. So this is the game of Alien Factor. And for this game, you needed to have some paper, something to write with, some coins, playing piece, dice would be good, somebody to play with, and, um, oh, and probably a bear. Hope you enjoy it.